What is going on everyone, my name is Kodamor and welcome back to Electronics episode 16. In this episode we are going to clarify a couple of things and then talk about what power slash wattage is. First things first, remember I am only a hobbyist when it comes to electronics and I am by no means a professional at electronics. That means that I'm almost guaranteed to make a few mistakes within this series. So if you see any mistakes in any of my videos, be sure to comment them down below. Especially if those mistakes have to do with safety, because I want everyone to be as safe as possible. With that being said, however, I am not responsible for anything that you do following along with this series, so you are at your own risk when you perform any of these electronics experiments. I am not responsible for any of that. Alright, now let me clarify a couple of things that many people have questions on. First things first, some people ask which side of the circuit should you put a switch on? So in this circuit I just have a resistor and an LED here. Some people ask, should the switch be placed closer to the positive terminal of the battery, or should the switch be placed closer to the negative terminal of the battery? Now, it'll work the exact same both ways, however, many people use the convention of placing the switch closer to the positive terminal of the battery. So I'm going to try and do this from now on within this series. Due to convention, and many people say that it is a bit safer just by the fact of how electrons move. I'm not going to go into any of those details in this video, you can look that up on your own if you're interested. But that that will be the convention that I'm going to be using in this series. The next thing that I'm going to kind of clear up for you guys is which way does electricity flow in a DC circuit? There have been many many arguments on this in the comments and I'm just going to clear it up a little bit. Now when I'm talking about this I'm talking about through a DC direct current battery under fairly normal circumstances, all right? Now electricity is really the flow of electrons. That means physically electrons are moving from the negative terminal of the battery to the positive terminal in that direction. That is the physical movement of electrons. That's it, that's the science of electrons moving in a battery. Of course there are some situations that might change these, but in general that is the movement of electrons. However, you'll notice that schematic symbols and many articles that you might read online assume or show that electricity travels from positive to negative. And you'll see that a lot in schematic symbols. And that's because schematics and many articles use conventional electricity flow. Conventional. And convention shows that electricity travels from positive to negative. And this is just because years ago when this type of work was first being done, it was believed that electricity traveled positive to negative. Therefore, all the schematic symbols and many articles are written that way. And this still works because if you know anything about science, which it's okay if you don't, electrons are negatively charged and are attracted to a more positively charged surface. That's why they move towards the positive terminal. However, at the same time, it can be thought of as all these molecules losing electrons kind of in this direction. And that's why everything still works. Again, I'm not going to get too much into the nitty gritty details, of course. You can do more research on this by yourself. Finally, to clear up is multimeter common sense. This goes along with safety. I didn't show you guys to shove your multimeter in a wall outlet. Therefore, if you're going to go do that, do tons and tons of research so that you do that properly, as I never taught you guys how to do that. So be safe when you're working with electricity, guys. And finally, like I've said before, I'm not responsible for anything you guys do using the information in this series. Alright, enough of this safety talk, let's get on to power slash wattage. First things first, what is power? So power is essentially the rate of energy usage. We'll keep it simple. Power is the rate of work being done, or like I said, the rate of energy usage. We'll keep it that simple right now. But what about wattage or watts? Watts is simply a unit of measure of power. So watts is just a unit to measure power up here. And watts is often symbolized by the letter W, while power is often symbolized by the letter P. Now, you've likely seen power before. If you go to the store to buy a light bulb, many light bulbs have wattage ratings. So you might buy a light bulb that's 100 watts, meaning that it's going to take up more work than maybe a 90 watt light bulb, or take up more energy rather. So a general rule of thumb is the more wattage something has, the more energy is consumed by that device. Now let's talk about things that we've used so far in this series. Well, we've used resistors, and resistors actually have wattage ratings. Most commonly, and probably the ones that you have, are quarter watt rated resistors. So essentially this means that your resistor can handle up to a quarter, or 0.25 watts 
going through it without hurting itself too too badly. Now there's many other different wattage ratings for resistors such as an eighth watt which is a little bit less of a rating or a half watt or a full watt even and they go higher than that. But for our purposes quarter watt resistors even 8th watt resistors are probably plenty for the work that we are going to be doing. Now unfortunately, I don't know any way of figuring out the wattage rating of a resistor if it's unknown, but a general rule of thumb is the larger the resistor, the higher the wattage rating. Chances are your resistors are going to handle this series just fine and are probably either 8th or quarter watt resistors. Alright, this is probably not making too too much sense, let's just get into some simple equations so we can see the relationship a bit better. Power equals voltage times current. And of course, from this we can get voltage equals power over current, and current equals power over voltage as well. But this is kind of the main formula for power. And remember, power in our case is just going to be measured in watts. So watts equals voltage times current. Let me get into an example and maybe it'll be a bit more understandable because I'm confusing myself right now. We're gonna say that in our first ever example I did with LEDs, my LED was going to take 3.2 volts from our power supply at 24 milliamps. And remember, 24 milliamps is just 0 0.024 amps. So that was the voltage and current that my LED would use. So let's find out how much power that my LED was using. We know that power is going to equal our voltage times our current, which is going to equal 3.2 multiplied by our 0 0.024 amps, which is going to equal 0.0768 watts. So the power that my LED was using is 0 0.0768 watts. That is essentially the amount of energy that LED was using. And we could do the same or similar rather calculation for the resistor that we used in that circuit as well. Because remember, power is just a unit of work or how much energy is being used. So I'm going to fully admit to you guys right now that if I was watching this for the first time, this probably would make zero sense to me. So if you don't fully understand the point of power, don't worry about it at all. We're not going to use it that much, especially in the beginning of this series here. I just wanted to get wattage out of the way in case you ever see wattage or wanted to do a bit more research on your own about it. And it's a good thing to keep in mind that wattage is simply how much energy is being used by a certain component and it can be useful to calculate this for certain devices. That way you can make sure that you're not having too high of a wattage and using too much electricity. There's much more to wattage guys, if you're interested go ahead and look it up in yourself and I will have videos on this in the far future. I just wanted to get this out of the way, thanks a lot guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video where we're going to talk about series and parallel circuits.